This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Prince Zach. This is the Prince of Investment coming all the way live from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, via Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, for everybody that's tuning in, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button who's catching this live out of Hawaii. And for the people that are catching the playback on uh, YouTube or the podcast, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, share button. Drop comments below. Uh, but as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time. So we're going to jump straight into it. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about, uh, like you said in the description box, we're talking about 401Ks, right? Because, you know, hey, my 401K is down. What now? Man, the market is sucking. The market is stinking it up. I was doing so great last year. I put more money into it. Now what is happening? What is happening? You know, the market is taking a downturn. What can I do to my portfolio? What does this mean? What do you got to say about this, Prince? You know, you guys always talk about this investment stuff, so here it is. So the first thing, why your portfolio is taking a downturn is because, as we all know, it has been, ever since October has came, it has been terrible. But it hasn't been terrible. What I mean, it has been terrible for returns. Guys, guys and girls, if you've been following and been listening to me for a while now, you know that I have been speaking about the market taking a downturn. When is the downturn going to happen? I thought it was going to happen in 2015, right around election time, but it didn't. The market actually went up. It was going up. It was going up. And I was kind of worried because when was the last market crash? 2008, right? The last market crash was in 2008, and we know about every three to five years, we see a, a, a market collapse, a financial collapse. But what has happened is we have seen a big, um, you know, market run ever since 2009. 2008 happened. March 2009, we started to uptick. And since March 2009, all the way until about October, we've been on the up, up, well, we're still on the upward market, but we've been in the upward market ever since, which is called a bullish market. Bull means going up, bear means going down. And since so, I mean 2009 to 2010, 11 to 12, to 13, to 14, to 15, to 16, to 17, to almost 18 until red October. I like to call it red October. Until the month of October came around, we've been set a downturn, and now we practically lost all the gains of 2018, have been, you know, have disappeared. We're down 17 points, 17% ever since on the S&P 500 since the top. Now, Prince, you don't seem worried. Prince, what does this have to do with me? The reason why I'm not worried is because this is a healthy downturn in the market. The market moves in cycles. What are those four cycles? You have a you have a trough, which is the bottom of the market. Then you have a expansion, which means that you're coming out of the bottom of the market. Then you're going to hit what's called a peak. A peak is just what that is, a peak. Then you have a downturn in the market, meaning that when you go down, you have what's called a recession or a retraction. Then you go into the trough, then into expansion, to a peak. So I have been, uh, I have been saying, you know, you have characteristics when you're in expansion. And expansion means that unemployment is low, right? Unemployment is low. That means a lot of people are working. Uh, corporate profits are high. Taxes are lower. So you're seeing high corporate profits. High corporate profits mean a high stock market. When people make more money, they spend more money. Everybody has jobs. You know, all these things that said we was in expansion. But when we're in expansion, I was wondering, where's the peak? Where's the peak? Where's the peak? Because I know what is after the repeat, the contraction, recession. So the way the market's been looking since October, it looks like we're headed into a recession. A recession is 20%. We're at 17. We're almost close to being in a recession, right? So some people say, oh, it's due to the tears, it's due to Trump. It's a much-needed cycle. And I was waiting on this cycle because – I retired from the military in four years, so I had been waiting on a recession. I want to see the market go down. I don't want to go down right when I'm going out into the uh, real world. I want to see it go down, and I want us to be on the up and up when I came out. I want us to be headed for an expansion or in an expansion, right? Because uh, during my 15-year tenure in the military career, 15 and a half years of military career, I've seen ups and downs in the economy that has affected the actual uh, military itself, whereas uh, downsizing, cuts, and things like that. So I've been able to survive them so far. And in my career, I said, hey, well, I want the market to take a downturn because when the market takes a downturn, 
it turns red. When you go into a store, when you see a red tag, what does that mean? That means there's a sale. That means there's a sale. That means, for example, I can buy more. So anything, if you're someone that is contributing to your 401k, the first thing you should be looking to do is ways to up your contribution. Move about 1%. You probably won't even move it. I need to take my own take my own medicine and go move my 1% as well. Move it up 1%. If you was doing 6%, 7%, 8%, look into moving it up 1%. Now, Grant, I don't know your whole financial picture. I don't know what your credit card debt is. I don't know what your mortgage is. I don't know what else you have going on. So technically, I can't give you a recommendation. I would advise you to look into, if you're contributing to your 401k, look into taking advantage as the market takes a downturn. These are the times you should be taking a downturn. But what do people do when the market's taking a downturn? Well, I'm going to wait till it hit the bottom, then I'm going to jump in. That is insinuating that you can time the market. If you can time the market, please give me a call. <laughs> please email me. If you can time the market 100%. And that is to say that most people cannot time the market. Most people won't time the market. And not saying that as a bad thing. We're saying that, hey, if you can't time the market, then you have to uh, – if you can't time the market, then you have to invest consistently. DCA, what is that called? Dollar cost averaging. You pay the market like you're paying a bill. You're doing it over and over and over. So when it's going up, it's going down, you don't care. You're still jumping in there regardless, right? So now, Prince, I have my 401k. The first thing you have to do, look at more ways you can contribute more. Okay, Prince, I contributed more. What should I buy? What should I uh, contribute to? Doesn't matter what company you're with. Doesn't matter who you work for. If you offer a 401k, by federal law, they must offer you an aggressive fund, a uh, an aggressive fund, a moderate, and a conservative fund. Conservative is something like uh, bond, some, something considered to be a bond. Um, you got conservative, which is considered to be a bond. Then you may have moderate, maybe something like um, more so of like a broad-based index, S&P 500. Then you may have aggressive, maybe something like a small cap or international. You know, I would say small cap and S&P 500 may be considered moderate, but, you know, international may be something maybe on the risky end. Now, what I would do, and I will tell you why, I would look into contributing my money more into the S&P 500, a broad-based index of common stock. Now, this is not for everybody. If you're 65 years old, getting ready to retire next year, I would tell you to go out here and jump and buy a bunch of stocks because we might be heading for a recession for the next two years. If you're someone like that, you may want to go into something that's more broad-based, fixed, right, something like a bond or something like that. So if you're a younger person, if you're someone who has a time horizon, a time horizon is someone who's not looking to take out this money or needed this money for the next five or the next ten, they're long, you're a long-term investor. If you are a long-term investor, I will look into jumping into things like common stocks or small cap, large cap, small cap stocks what I look into. So if you are a military person, you have something called the C fund, common stock fund. If you have anything related to the S&P 500, look into that, right? So now you have, uh, that's one thing you can look into doing. The second thing you can look into doing is, um, the second thing you can look into doing, once you are moving your money to the common stock, is if you have money inside of a bond, or if you have a fixed annuity or anything like that, you can look into selling some of those shares to get involved in some of those common stock things, right? These are for our long-term people. If you're someone who's short-term and you're saying, man, um, what am I going to do? My portfolio is kind of going down. I need this money for a projected date. You should sit down and seek the help of a financial counselor, financial advisor, financial planner. Someone with CFP behind their name, at least AFC behind their name, right? Uh, or CFP, CPA, um, what well, I would say CFP, AFC, or uh, who else is out there? Maybe possibly, or CFA. So the thing about why am I saying that, Prince, why are you saying this? Why are you recommending this or not? I'm going with those designations because at least I know that they at least should be uh, competent to know how to give out proper recommendations of what's going on. You know, now, you may have a family member, a cousin that's great, that may be a hedge fund manager that is great, but just broadly speaking, I'm just looking at those things saying, hey, they have these, 
they should have be able to give you some worthwhile knowledge. So if you're a person that's short term, you should be looking to you shouldn't have that much in equities. If you're someone who's looking to send your kid out to college, retire next year, something like that, you should have most of your funds or a good bit of your funds more to something that's more of a fixed income. Um, something like a uh, a bond, something like bonds or a government bond, something that's a little bit more secure. Now, something that I told people to do a while ago was I'm selling my uh, fixed income. All those bonds that I was purchasing, as the market was up, I purchased some bonds. Now, as the market is down, I'm selling my bonds and I'm buying more equities, right? So I pretty much liquidated my bonds and started to buy more equities as the market continues to go down so I can take advantage of the equity market, common stock, as they go down. In particular, six with war, hope you don't mind. Now, Prince, why, uh, what are some other ways I can take advantage? One, up your contributions to your 401k. Two, looking to slowly buy more and more common stocks as common stocks are going. Uh, three, if you're a long-term investor, look at your portfolio, get out of those bonds. I would look into reconsidering making my portfolio more aggressive to take advantage of common stocks and small cap stocks as they are becoming more and more on sale. Just think about it. Look at a company like Berkshire Hathaway. Look at a company like Amazon. Look at a company like Nike. Nothing has happened fundamentally, financially, or fundamentally financial that has happened. You know, um, since that has not happened, you have to go back and you have to uh, – that, that nothing, since nothing financially has happened to Berkshire Hathaway, why did it go from $220 to $196? Nothing's wrong with it. It was the same mindset you have to look at. When you look at a shirt that's on the set, on the shelf that was $20, now it's $5, you're like, hmm, I wonder what happened to it. And they're like, well, it's a long sleeve. And you're like, and it's summertime is coming. So they're trying to get rid of you. like, okay, well, nothing is wrong with the shirt. So you will still buy the shirt because you look at it as a sale. That's how I start scavenging the market. It's nothing fundamentally financially has happened to the company. It has the same revenues. Nothing has happened. I know that you're going through a cycle. Just like when you I like what I just thought of. Just like retail, because we all know retail. We all buy something, women, whatever, women, men, we, we all buy something. We know when it's summertime, all of the pants, all of the plaid shirts, all of the long sleeve shirts, coats and jackets go on sale. Why? Because the summertime is coming, right? Then when it turns winter, guess what goes on sale? All of the shorts, all of the bright colors, things like that go on sale because they're making room for the winter, collect, the winter collection. So it's a cycle. Same thing with the market, right? I look and say, wow, Berkshire Hathaway, this Class B shares were 220 bucks. Now it's 196 bucks. What happened? Nothing happened financially to the company. Nothing has happened financially to the company. It's just following along on a cycle. So guess what? When it's the winter time, you buy your summer stuff. When it's the summer time, you buy your winter stuff. You can buy a couple little pieces in there and whatnot, but take advantage of the natural cycle. Yes, we have tears. Yes, we have threats of government shutdown. Yes, we have uh, all type of trade wars and tears, things like that going on. Um, but those are things that naturally happen in the economy. Naturally happens in the economy. If you go back to 2008, you'll see the same thing. When you go back to 2000, you'll see the same thing. When you go back to 96, you'll see the same thing. You always will see the same thing over and over and over and over, right? So you have to be mindful of those things. You have to be very cognizant of what's going on and what's happening, all right? So now take advantage. Up your terms of contributions for the 15th time. Looking to take advantage of those common stocks, small cap stocks. If you have things into like a bond or you have a uh, any type of very conservative thing, take advantage of the common stock. Why would you take advantage of the common stock? Because those bonds, you know, they're not really on sale. They're more conservative. Yes, you're not going to lose, but you're only gaining one or two percent. If you're someone who's older or someone who's looking, that doesn't mean that you're older. You're someone who's closer to retirement and you don't want to take advantage of these things. This is what you should do. You should now look into not common stocks. You should now look into moving some of your money into more sturdier things like you should be doing the opposite, moving things to like fixed income, um, maybe some type of annuity, maybe some type of government bond, maybe some type of fixed income bond, 
long-term corporate bonds, corporate long-term bonds. Now, here's another trick with bonds. When you watch bonds, bonds have ratings. Just like you have a credit score, you know how someone has a 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800. Bonds get credit scores too. I mean, not bonds, but companies get credit scores too. When you go to purchase a bond, a bond is pretty much telling you what's their ability, how much debt the company has, and its ability to pay it back. So once you have that, that is another big ticket item as well. Looking at looking at what is the what is the bond credit rating for? What is the uh, bond rating for Amazon? What's the bond rating for Microsoft? What's the bond rating for Berkshire? What's the bond rating for McDonald's? The bond rating tells you, gives you a quick synopsis of is it a grade A bond, grade B bond, grade C bond, or a junk bond. You know, the higher rating the bond has, the less it pays out in interest. Just like you, the higher your credit score is, the less you pay out in interest, right? So those are some tricks and some trades. If you got your 401k, I've seen so many people, oh, my 401k is doing bad. Because what did people do last year when the market was up 20%? People got excited. They started to buy more. Now the market is in the dumps or headed towards the dumps, not looking too good. Now what are people doing? They're starting to sell. They're starting to invest less when they should be investing more. Just like you would go on, if you went to a store and you saw milk and eggs for 50% perfectly fine, guess what you would do? You will buy a lot of it. You would say, man, it's on sale. Let me buy a bunch of it, right? Same thing you should do here. But anyway, guys and girls, that's my time. My name is Prince Dykes. As always, thank you for catching me live on Think Tech Hawaii. You can catch me live on Think Tech Hawaii every other Friday at 3 p.m. Hawaii time. That's every other Friday, 3 p.m. Hawaii time. But you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram. I'm on Twitter a little bit. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube uh, at The Investor Show, as you can see behind us. The Investor Show is where you can catch a lot of great stuff. Or you can catch me here on Think Tech. But until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe, I hope you took something away from that. Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.